Anybody besides me feel the presence of the Lord? The Holy Spirit is in this place. The Holy Spirit is in this place. Yes, God. Yes, God. Now, God, we thank you for the singing of song. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit's presence in this place. Thank you, Lord, for what you've already done, how you've prepared the hearts of the people to be able to hear this word, but then take it from hearing to being doers of your word. It's no good for us just to hear your word, but God, you called us to carry your word, to live by your word, to walk out your word. So God, stand up in your preacher once again. I need your anointing. I need your grace. I need your power. I need clarity. Think with my mind. Speak with my mouth. If it's not on my manuscript, translate it to my mind and then to my mouth, oh God. God, I'm asking you right now to do all things well through me as I stand behind this sacred desk once again to declare the unadulterated word of God. So, Lord, bless me right now so that I can be a blessing to the people of God. So, Lord, that they will be built up to be carriers and doers of your word. God, draw someone to Jesus. Advance your kingdom and bring glory to your own name. We ask these things in the name of Jesus the Christ and for his sake. Amen. If you would, if you would turn to the Gospel of John, if you are able to physically stand for the reading of God's Word, even at home, stand and honor God's Word for the reading of God's Word. John, the 15th chapter, familiar passage of Scripture. We're going to look at two verses on this morning. Two verses on this morning. John 15, verses 12 and 13. And since it's Valentine's Day on tomorrow, and we recognize February as this month of love, I thought we would take a look at what Jesus says about love. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to make it clear pretty quick. John, the 15th chapter, starting at verse 12, reading down to verse 13. I'm reading from the New International Version of Scripture on today, and it reads as follows. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this. Lay down one's life for one's friends. Amen. Thus far, the reading of God's word, you may be seated in his very presence. New King James Version reads this way, John. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love than this, than one would lay down one's life for his friends. I want to preach and teach as the Holy Spirit shall lead on this day from this subject. Love like Jesus loves. Amen. I'll type that in. Amen. Shout in the house. Love like Jesus loves. Love like I said shout in the house. Love, love like Jesus like loves. Love like Jesus loves. Love. Right, here we go. My brothers and my sisters, the first mark of a true believer, a disciple of Christ, a follower of Christ, is love. Corey, in other words, the life of a Christian is first marked or characterized by love. Yeah. It is a love given by Jesus, a love defined by Jesus, and a love that's modeled by Jesus himself. Amen. It is an incarnational love that is to be modeled to the glory of God uh, and the winning of souls unto God. Yeah. Incarnate love includes trusting, obeying, and honoring God while enjoying a personal, precious relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Incarnate love, Lady Sonia, gives daily dividends beyond our understanding while we serve our Savior out loud with gladness and thanksgiving from our hearts. Loving like Jesus is the best way to live, Tanya. When we love like Jesus loves, we can step out of 
outside of ourselves uh, and clearly see the genuine love is a game changer. That genuine love is essential in our very lives. We can look beyond ourselves and see how Jesus will use us in extraordinary ways to display his love and help meet the needs of mankind. Uh, we can shed layers of selfishness, resentment, anxiety, pettiness, and entitlement. Uh, uh, we can rise above our human imperfections and step into transcendent love, an unconditional love. Uh, when we love based on our limited nature uh, and understanding of love, uh, we will always place conditions uh, on who we love. Oh, God, help me in here. Our current culture tells us to love is only those who give unto us, yeah. expecting something in return, a conditional love based on return, that what you stand to gain from it. And the Lord helped me on yesterday, ma'am, as I was in distinctive specialties in Charlotte looking for some Greek paraphernalia, some new nailer to put on, and, and I was listening to a lady. I wasn't trying to eavesdrop on her conversation, right? But she was so loud that the Lord said, this is for you. She's having a conversation with a friend and she's telling this friend, I don't know if he's worth me spending $80 on. Oh, she went back and forth with the friend. I, I thought she was going to leave the store, Leslie, not buying a thing because she was loud and talking about, I don't know what he's going don't give me. Ah, she kept talking to Marsha. She kept talking about, I don't know if I'm going to do this because I don't know what he's going to return, what he's going to give to me. And I want what I give to him to be a blessing so that he can give it back to me. But I stopped by to let somebody know that's not how love operates. Love operates in the giving mindset and does not expect anything in return. You learn to love like Jesus. Yes. It's all about giving. Yes. Yes. You see, transcendent love, Deacon Clayton, is a love with no strings attached. Love is a love that doesn't need recognition, is not motivated to receive a reward based upon our actions. Transcendent love, unconditional love is going beyond the identity of ourselves. It is a love that is not hindered or diverted by the circumstances of life. Transcendent love moves us to places where we love those who are not in our circles and definitely not in our cliques. Oh my God. Transcendent love has no boundaries or limits. Transcendent love can transform the culture that we live in. It can tear down the walls of class, the walls of color, and the walls of culture that divide us. Transcendent love, unconditional love, can forgive the unforgivable and love the unlovable. Transcendent love, unconditional love is the love that Jesus loves to talk about. It's the love that Jesus modeled in his life. Jesus model of love challenges you and I to stop settling for anything less than the love that Jesus showed toward us. Yes, somebody needs to know that the love of Jesus is the most excellent way. That's what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He tells us that love is the most excellent way. And if you're going to be a Christ follower, then we got to learn to love like Jesus loves, and we got to learn to carry out his mission in the world. You see, in prior verses to our text, Jesus used the analogy of a vine and a branch. He explains how behavior signifies a relationship with Jesus. So I'm going somewhere. Uh, in that discussion, Jesus reiterates, Renaya, that obedience to his teaching uh, is an expected sign uh, of those who truly call themselves yeah. a follower of the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Uh, yeah. Among the most crucial commands given by Jesus, Desiree, uh, is the requirement for Christ followers uh, to love one another. Uh, Jesus is always about 
showing us how to do something uh, before he asks us to do something. Uh, Jesus sets the tone on how we should love. Uh, Jesus commands us to love the way uh, he loved us. Uh, he challenges us to love the right way. Uh, his life and conduct is a standard uh, by which we are called to live up to. Uh, love like Jesus loves. Uh, our character must echo uh, the character of Christ's love. Uh, that love that speaks of a practical love. It's a love in action. It's a love where we show people that we love them. As Christ follows, we are called to extend the nature of Christ's love. For you and I to exhibit this kind of love is based on our decision to obey Jesus and then love by giving ourselves to others. This means that love is shown through obedience. Ah, you see, obedience requires action, uh, which is only made possible through loving interactions uh, with others. I'm going to back that thing up and say it one more time. Uh, obedience requires action, uh, which is only made possible through loving interactions uh, with others. The love that Jesus wants us to show toward others only comes through a genuine, uh, authentic relationship with him. Uh, when we abide in Christ, uh, when we abide in his word, uh, when we abide in his love, uh, then we have no problem loving everybody. That's what God told me to tell somebody. When you are connected to the king of kings, then your conduct should show that you're connected to the king. Somebody needs to grab that. Our conduct should be a reflection of our connection to Jesus. And somebody needs to grab that in the spirit right now because you got to make a decision on your own. If you are connected to him, then your conduct uh, should show that you're connected. Uh, is there anybody besides me uh, knows your conduct has changed uh, because you are connected to Jesus? I don't do what I used to do to Marshall because I'm connected to Jesus. And uh, when you're connected, your conduct should line up with Jesus. Yeah, but now when we love Jesus, we can love like Jesus. Love for one another is rooted in the ultimate love of Christ. And I know somebody saying to yourself, I'm imperfect, preacher. And you don't know some of the folk I'm struggling to love. You don't know how hellious they are. You don't know how they treat me. But I stop by on my way to heaven to let somebody know that even in the midst of our struggle, we got an example to show us how to love. If you think they treat you bad, how do you think they treated our Savior? He can love you and he can love me. And we got to learn to love each other. We can't allow our attitudes, our selfish desires, our unforgiveness in our hearts to keep us from loving one another. The problem many of us face, Sister Debbie, is that we're trying to do this thing on our own. And I just stopped by for a minute to just let somebody know you ain't going to ever accomplish this by yourself. I will let you know that all things are possible with yes. Jesus. I believe the text today is Jalen to teach us and to give us some insight on how to love like Jesus. And I ain't got but two points I'm going to drop on you real quick and we're going to be on our way. The first thing this text teaches us is the extent of Jesus' love and our call to imitate that love. Yes. Look at what verse 12 says again. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Look at this. Jesus begins with a simple and straightforward command to his disciples. To love one another as I have loved you. Jesus spoke these words to the disciples that as they stood in the upper room, having risen up from the last supper. Here's Jesus on his way to Calvary's cross, but he's still providing instruction for his disciples. He's providing instruction, Rama, so that they can live out what he's told them and taught them and represent him in the world. Jesus is giving them instructions to carry out as they walk out 
their faith in the world. And I can just stop for here for a moment. God's instructional manager, manual for you and me is for us to walk out our faith yeah. in the world. It's not good enough, Deacon Clayton, to know his word and not walk out his word. The instruction manual is for you and I to be able to walk this thing out, yeah. to be able to do what God is calling us to do. And God was speaking through Jesus to these disciples in the upper room. And now he's speaking to you and me. It's clear that love is not optional, Mom Bitsy, but it must be a vital part of our daily living. Yeah. Uh, the love each other command of Jesus uh, is at the core of following him. If you are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, then at the core of who you are is love. Yeah. Uh, this means that Christ's followers should possess uh, and model a kind of love uh, that neither believers nor the world can find uh, anywhere else but in Jesus. Uh, we are called to love as Jesus loved. We're called to love in the same way Jesus loves. Uh, Jesus really cared that his disciples uh, loved one another and they were doing it. Uh, so according to the measure and the quality uh, of Jesus' love, not their measure, not their quality, but the quality and measure of Jesus' love. Uh, Jesus pictures the high standard of love uh, that he gives toward us. Uh, love one another as Jesus has loved us. Uh, this is an amazing call uh, for the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the Christ follower. Uh, those who say they follow him. Uh, remaining in the love of Jesus uh, means that we will uh, love one another. Uh, if we love Jesus, then we will desire to express our love uh, to one another. Our love in Jesus uh, leads us to love one another. Uh, Jesus wants us to love uh, according to the measure and the quality of his love toward us. Uh, he wants us to love one another uh, based on his scope, uh, based on his breath, uh, and based on the duplication of the love he shows toward us. Jesus says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. The Greek word here, John, is the Greek word agape. It's not the fickle word arrows. It's not even the heartfelt phila, but it's agape love. Agape love is that unconditional love. It's that love like grace, a free gift for others, all of us who or unearned or unmerited. Yes, love must be experienced and shared. Agape love often involves deep feelings, but it begins with a decision. Agape love doesn't consider merit, doesn't wait for inspiration. Agape love is the kind of love that God the Father exemplified, especially in relationship with his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no love like a copy love. Ah, love as a noun uh, is a joyful reality. Uh, it's a term of endearment. Uh, but when you look at love uh, as a verb, uh, it's a much stronger expression. Uh, it anticipates action. Uh, love as a noun can be discussed and analyzed. Uh, but when love is a verb, uh, it requires you and I to do something. Uh, it requires action on our part, Dennis. Uh, you see the tense of the verb love. Uh, here is in the present tense, uh, which we suggest uh, that it's a repeated action uh, and an ongoing action. Uh, that is what it really says in the Greek. Uh, keep loving one another. Uh, don't you stop loving one another. Uh, the quality of that love uh, must be kind the same kind of love uh, that you and I receive from Christ. Uh, anybody God told me to tell somebody today uh, that you can do it uh, because I've already done it for you. Uh, is there that has experienced uh, the love of Jesus. Uh, when others turn their back on you, uh, when others counted you out, uh, you experience the love of Jesus uh, in your life. Is there anybody can say, I know Jesus loves me? Yes, I know for the Bible. And my life tells me so. Is there anybody can give him some praise because you're living out the love of Jesus in your life? Jesus. Here he is, Mike. He's repeating verse 12. 
You got to understand that Jesus had an early exchange about this thing called love. Yeah. If you look back at John chapter 13 verse 34, he says, love one another as I have loved you. His love is the source and the measure of yeah. our love. Our love is absolutely at the heart of the gospel message. The life of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, the death of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus. Hear me on, if God is love, then God's people must make God's love visible in the earthly realm. We are called to manifest love toward each other. You see, biblical love involves more than mere emotions, more than mere personal preferences. Love is a decision to compassionately, righteously, responsibly, and sacrificially to seek the well-being of other people. Yes, you and I can love people whom we might not necessarily like because love is not dependent on our feelings. That's why Jesus can command us, Leslie, to love our enemies. Yes, it's true that love may include some feelings. It may include some affection, but these feelings don't drive my love. Our love is driven by the sacrifice of welfare for other people. Our love confirms the realness of Jesus in the lives of his people. It's a mark or a characteristic of the authentic Christ follower. Yes, the love Jesus speaks of is counterculture to the culture that we live in. Yes, we live in a world that's all about getting all they can get. But God told me to tell somebody this transaction is not based on the culture, but it's based upon Jesus. He told me to tell somebody that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I'm so glad on this second Sunday in February if I don't get anything tomorrow or I don't get anything next week, I've already got what I need. i got the love of Jesus and because he loves me I'm going to give that love to somebody else is there anybody going to give because it's been given up to you you see the command love removes our hiding place it, it strips us, Kenny, of making excuses not to love. It leaves us with no option but to love. Jesus commands his church, his children to love one another. Because it's so fundamentally vital to the very essence of, of our relationship with him. Yeah. If you're going to be on mission with God, yeah. you're going to be a part of the body of Christ. All right now. Jesus wants you to know that you got to display his love. Yeah. This thing ain't about entertainment, man. This thing is about showing folk that I can love you. Is there anybody besides me had somebody who tried to trip you up, dig a ditch for your demise, but you showed them the love of Jesus in the midst of it, and then they're looking at you like you lost your mind, and then at the end of the day, you got the last say, so is there anybody can be real on today, and realize when you love, God will take care of it. Swallows walk in love, they live in love, Vince. Yes. We've been commanded by Jesus and we've been called by Jesus to love. We're called to imitate his love, we're called to emulate his love, we're called to replicate his love, we're called to copy his love, we're called to mimic his love, we're called to mirror his love, we are called to reproduce his love. We Jesus love. I ain't say like I said love them. When they try to take you out, you gotta love them anyhow. Is there anybody besides me got some family members that keep on doing crazy stuff, but you love them in spite of it? Is there anybody besides me got 
loving them through it as they go through life. Is there anybody besides me that knows that Jesus is my example and I'm going to live like Jesus lived? I got to go. I got to go. But not only are we see the extent of his love and we're called to imitate it. But the greatest example of love is given to us by Jesus yes. to guide us. Yes. Don't miss that. Jesus shows it to his children so it can guide yes. our lives. Amen. You don't understand it? Look, look at verse 13 again what he says. He says, yes. greater, love greater love has no one than this yes. to lay down one's life for oh, one's man. friends. Oh. Uh, the children already set it up. When he talked about the whole notion of our sins upon the cross. Yeah. Jesus begins verse 13 with a statement. Yeah. It, it is a statement of fact. It, it's not a maybe. It's not a, 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 a might be. But it's a statement of fact. He says uh, that greater love has no one than this. That he would lay down his life for his friends. You see Jesus will never command you and I to do anything. That he won't demonstrate. Oh God, help me hold it up. We are to love each other because Jesus loves us. And he loves us enough that he went to the cross for us. Oh, not only do we experience the extent of Jesus' love toward us, but we get to see Jesus in the greatest example of love toward us. Look at what the Amplified Bible says. No one has greater love nor stronger commitment than, than to lay down his own life for his friends. Uh, Eugene Peterson in the Message Bible says, uh, this is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line uh, for your friends. The Voice Bible says there is no greater way to love uh, than to give your life for your friends. Uh, the greatest expression of love, Hermiana, is to lay down your life for another. Uh, great love, real love. Is shown by the laying down of your life for your friends. Real love is that Christ died in your place. He died in my place. The love that flows from us in us and through us comes through Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Ah, stay with me now. Once we fully realize that the love of Christ has been poured out in us, we can truly identify our ourselves in him. Uh, Jesus describes the measure, the extent, and the quality uh, of his love for his disciples. Uh, he uses a pattern for the way uh, that you and I should love one another. Uh, his love is a complete love. Uh, it is a surpassing greatness uh, by the laying down of one's life. Uh, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 verse 16, uh, by this we know uh, love that he laid down his life for us. Uh, the good shepherd lays down his life uh, for the sheep. Uh, Jesus was willingly uh, to die on the cross uh, that others might live. Uh, Jesus sacrificed his life uh, that we might have a life and we might have it uh, more abundantly, Deacon said. Uh, Christ demonstrated his true love for us. Uh, because we were yet sinners, uh, Christ died for us. Uh, yes, Jesus lived a selfless life, uh, a self-sacrificing life, uh, so that you and I could experience uh, his grace and his love. Uh, we sacrifice by surrendering uh, our lives to him. Uh, oh, don't you underestimate uh, his investment in our relationship. Uh, our relationship is only possible uh, because he died uh, while we were still trapped in our sins. I know somebody saying to yourself, I wasn't even born when Jesus died. But let me help you, my brother and my sister. He died because he knew that we were going to be sinners. Yes, he died for us. He showed his love for us. He gave us an example of that love. Jesus calls us to do which he does. It says like this, I command you to love one another, but I do not command you to do something I myself will not do. In fact, I will show you the greatest expression of love on the earth. I will lay down my life for you. If I lay down my life,
fight for you in love. Can't you do the lesser act of loving each other? Jesus says, I showed you the greatest love of all. I gave my life for you. So what's your problem in loving your neighbor? Jesus says, I've already done all the heavy lifting. He says, why can't you love as I have loved you? Jesus says, I've set the standard. I've raised the bar. Jesus says, I demonstrated my love by my willingness to die for you. It's on the basis and in this context that you and I are called to live. We are to love each other because we stand in the face of the shocking love of the cross. The cross will always represent the love God has for me. Listen to Paul in Romans chapter 12 verse 9 through 21. Let love be your genuine. I abhorrent what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slowful in zeal, but be reverent in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek how to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be holy, but associate with the lowly at heart. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. But love never avenge yourself, but let lead the wrath unto God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord, to the contrary. If your enemy is hungry, then feed them. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. All for my doing, you will reap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Somebody needs to grab that in the spirit that I can love like I need to love. Is there anybody in 
the building, uh, don't miss that, that you're a friend of God. Uh, because the Bible says, uh, I want to lay down uh, my life uh, for my friends. Uh, is there anybody in the building uh, or online glad uh, that your friend on today? Uh, is there anybody in the building uh, or online uh, that knows he's a friend uh, that will stick closer than any brother? Uh, is there anybody besides me uh, that knows that Jesus? is the one uh, who died for you. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, that not only that he died, uh, but he got up uh, with all power in his hands. Uh, and I gotta go, uh, but I need somebody to know uh, that you gotta know uh, that there's no greater love uh, than the love uh, that Jesus uh, showed toward you. Uh, and if he can show me uh, that much love, uh, then some people uh, who might not love me uh, because I've got to learn uh, to share the love of Jesus. Uh, Jesus says, uh, I know you know uh, who I am, uh, but do you love like me? Uh, the Bible says uh, we love uh, because he first loved us. Uh, the Bible says uh, a new commandment uh, I give to you uh, that you love one another uh, just as I have loved you. Uh, you are all to love one another by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another the Bible says and above all things have reverent love for one another the love will cover a multitude of sins the Bible says anyone who does not love does not know God because God Transition has been yeah, made. Yeah, yeah. Go with it. Yeah. And when I 
live for Jesus, yes. I love like yes. Jesus. Yes. And, and then if someone's going to throw this one in free, sometimes like, you got to love the hell out of some people. Yes. Some folk yeah. full of it. Yeah. But my loving them yeah. is my prayer, D, yeah. that I'm going to push more love into yeah. them, more Jesus yeah. represented by my life. Yeah that they can see that this thing is real. Yeah. The challenge for the church, we got to go. Jesus. Everybody's standing. Yeah. The Jesus. challenge for the Christ follower, the challenge Come for on. us yeah. who say we love Jesus That's right. is to live out his commandments. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Jesus doesn't give us a suggestion here, Jesse. See, many times when we read scripture, we act like Jesus said, oh yeah, if you want to do that, if you want to go ahead. No, no, Jesus says that you don't have a choice in this matter. He says, if you choose me, then I command you. And what I've discovered is, kid, that when you are a true Christ follower, you understand that not only does he command, uh, but he also promises. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we like to talk about the promises of God? But how much do we talk about when God is commanding us to do something? We got to be an example. We got to be an example. Light counsels out darkness. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. All the time. Yes, it does. Yes. You can't be what they are. That's right. Let me help you somebody real quick as we go. What, what I've discovered is Come on now. and living this life for Jesus Come on. and doing his will, <laughs> more folk really want that than the other anyway. We made the mistake of thinking folk want the old me. No, they don't. They don't want you to be old. You ain't got to lower yourself to, That's right. to fit in. I got to lower myself. That's why, Lamando, I'm cool today. Cool in the shade. If I watch the Super Bowl, I can watch it at my crib. <laughs> I don't need a whole bunch of lying folk. <laughs> I don't need a whole lot of fake folk. Uh, I ain't got to lower my standard. I refuse to lower the standard. God has called me to a life of righteousness and to live holy. And I'm going to live it the best way I know how. And I'm not going to allow people to pull me down to their level. I want to challenge somebody today. Whether online and in this room. Stop allowing your standard that God has given you to be lowered by people. I ain't, I ain't trying to hate on nobody. But we, we listen to folk who ain't got our best interests at heart. You need folk who love you, who, who can speak over you, who wants to encourage you. At least as Alex used to say to us, right, you need some folk who going to deal with you. We solution problems by building together. I shared this with Lisa earlier this week. That one of my former employers who went on to be with the Lord used to always say to me, anybody can identify the problem, but can you solution it? Okay, now. There you go. We have to work on solutioning 
the things that we see. Yeah. And it starts with me, Leslie. That's right. Dennis, it starts with me. Yeah. If I expect folk to love as Jesus loved, uh -huh. then it starts with me. Yeah. Stop looking at everybody else, what they ain't doing. Just handle you. That's right. That's right. Handle you. I promise you it's more than a day's work. Anybody besides me know you. And handling you is enough. Drama. Handling me is enough. I want to encourage us on this day. On the Lord's day. To love like Jesus. But it starts with living yeah. as Jesus would have you to live. Because you can't love like Jesus if you don't live like Jesus. I know, I know. Somebody says it's a high standard. It's all right. But who told you anything was easy? No, man. I'd rather the bar be too high than have that little low bar. As a close, think about a high hurdle. <laughs> what it takes for them to jump over. It takes technique. It takes a willingness huh, to leave the trust the trust that I got to make this leg over the hurdle and pull the other one behind me. Somebody needs to hear today, the Lord is saying that same practice, but more importantly, the same trust of me is what's going to help you overcome the obstacles, to overcome the disappointments, the the challenges that you and I face. Is there anybody besides me know that you've yes. had to overcome yes. some obstacles in your life? Yes. But not only have you had to overcome, is anybody besides me can be real today to yes. say that you're overcoming yes. some things right now? Yes. And every day of my life, I'm overcoming. Yes. Yes. And I want to encourage somebody today. Hallelujah. That you realize that you are an overcomer. Yes. And no devil in hell can keep you from what God has for you. Yes. What does Paul say in Romans chapter 8? He says that we are more than conquerors. <laughs> through him. Yes. Ah! Yes. Is there any more of the conquerors in this place yes. today? Online or in the house? Yes. We got to go. Yes. But somebody needs to experience the love of Jesus today. And let me be clear. I keep saying this. None of us control our birthday. None of us control our death day. All we control is that dash in between. And your dash will determine your destiny. I ain't talking about all that's going to happen on this side, but at some point, <laughs> we don't know when. We we're going to have to have a date with Jesus. And the question is, will you know him and will he know you? Or will he say, depart from me? For I never knew you. Don't confuse church with Christ. <laughs> church is good. Don't get me wrong. I love church. But, but the church can't save you. Christ is the only one who can save. 
What does the Bible say? The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh God. Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It's not a matter of feeling, but it's a matter of faith. As I look across this room today, see those online, I, I need to know without a shadow of a doubt that you know him. That you know Jesus as your personal Savior. And if you don't know him, I, I just want to want to pray a simple prayer for you today that, that the opportunity is yours to accept him or deny him. I chose to accept him and my life has never been the same. There is no way some of the, the blows that have come my way I would be able to even stand here today if it was not for Jesus. So if that's you, pray this prayer. Lord, I heard your word today. I heard these babies, these young people sing about upon the cross all my sins. Because of Jesus, my past sins, my present sins, and yes, even my future sins have already been taken away when I'm in relationship with him. That the word says that I'm forgiven. That my sins are thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. And so, Lord, on this day, I'm making a decision on the 13th day of February. That I'm going to give my life to Jesus because I need a secure future. I need to know without a shadow of a doubt that I got a home in glory and my name is written in the Lamb book of life. And so, Lord, on today, if there's one under the sound of my voice in the house or online, I'm asking you, Lord, right now, put a quickening in their spirit. Let them know that today is their day. That salvation belongs to you. It belongs to you. It's yours. All you got to do is accept it. If that's you online or in the house and you prayed that prayer, we just want to give you some information about salvation. So if you're in the house or online and Fill out the form online or in the house and you want to talk to me or Lady Sonia, one of our deacons about this whole thing called salvation. We want to make you make it known so that you can have the facts and not fiction about what it means to be saved and secure. If that's you in the house, just after church, tap one of our deacons up. Deacon Doug, will you raise your hand? Deacon Clayton, will you raise your hand and place your visitor? Lady Sonia, raise your hand. And you know me. One of us will make sure that you get what you need to be saved and secure. Second call, you're saved, but you're in need of a church home. Dick, I got so excited today to see people in church. My God. I look around this room today, I got Jesus' joy that people are in church. I, I know, I know you know how I am about the virus and you know how I am about COVID-19. We can be saved. But let me say to somebody online, your time is now. For that person who's just gotten real comfortable watching and I need you as a member. I need you to I need to, I need you to ask some questions. Because some folk been dropped watching online. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Pete, can I be real for a minute? We got to go. 
If it was not for the Lord on my side. That's right. These last three weeks have been the hardest three weeks of my life. My sister knew the Lord. But I loved her. And it hurts. I, 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 want, I want to be real because sometimes we try to People trying to move you. I had to say to somebody this week, you can't tell me how to grieve. So my slogan for you, or anybody else who's trying to rush me, rather than say, I need you to pray. Rather than you saying something that you hadn't even experienced. How can you tell me? That's right. That's right. There's some witnesses in the room yeah. that knows what it means to lose a sibling. Yeah. As I close, my pastor said to me, and I'm realizing it didn't play. He said, son, I know you lost your mom. I was with you there. You heard me say this last week. He said, but there's something about a sibling. Yeah. So there's an expectation we're going to bury our parents. But there was not an expectation. Even though I know the Lord. And I, I don't know when my time is either, right? But I say all that to say, man, if it was not for the Lord. I don't know. I don't know, dude. And I want to help somebody else. Something that helped me this week. If you hadn't gotten, there's a book by Tony Evans and his children called yes. Divine Disruption. Yes. And Dr. Evans and his children yes. deal with all the deaths that they yes. dealt with yes. in the last couple of years. Yep. Lost a niece at 38. Heart gave out. Yes. Older brother, excuse me, younger brother, older sister, and a matter of six months later. Lost his dad yeah. about another six months later. Yeah. And then lost his beloved wife yeah. all in a two-year span. Yeah. But something that caught my attention is Lady Science said, I need you to be careful. I need you to be careful. Kenny, I'll say this and I'm gone. Lois said the wife who was dying of cancer all right, says the enemy would like nothing yeah. better than y'all's to stop doing God's will and what you're called to do. <laughs> she said to her family, and she's dying of cancer. Don't y'all stop doing what you've been called to do. The devil would like nothing more than to discourage you and try to defeat you. So as I read on this week, the Lord said, yeah, Bible study is tomorrow, bro. You're going to teach. I'm going to give you everything you need. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, asked me on Thursday. You preaching? Yeah, I'm preaching because yeah. the Lord had shown me yeah. that it was yeah. therapeutic for me as well. Yeah. Because yeah. this is what I'm called to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to thank God yeah. that I got a relationship with Him that is real and authentic. hate to think, Kenny, if I had lost my sister yes. 25 years ago, uh, <laughs> on, Woo! I sure wouldn't be in church. <laughs> but I thank God I don't have to find my help in Hennessy or Ciroc or Beers or whatever. No weed for me. No heroin for me. I don't need that because I got the Savior. Is anybody glad you got the Savior today? I'm looking at some folk that I know got the Savior. I'm looking at some witnesses in this house today. I lost some folk. They got the Savior. The thing that I know. Dig on the other side. 
they shall see them again. God, we bless you and we thank you that no greater love than this, that Jesus would lay down his life for his friends. I'm so glad that I have an example in Jesus so that I can love my brothers and sisters in Christ so that I can love those who despitefully use me so that I can love those who try to bring evil toward me so that I can love like Jesus loves that I'm striving every day to live up to the standard the call and the claim that Jesus has given us all. Jesus says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So Jesus, we're not only going to hang on and walk in your promises, but we're going to walk in your commands. Because your commands release the promises. <laughs> so God, help us to be better. Help us, Lord, to live and to love each other with genuine, real, authentic, unconditional love. Love with no strings attached. Love because you loved us first. God, is my prayer that you watch over us and keep us as we leave this place. God, we thank you, Lord for what has transpired on this day in service through our young people and singing of song. We thank you, Lord, for our black history hero, Alicia Bird Clark. God, I ask that you continue, Lord, put purpose and plan before her. Let her go places where nobody else is willing to go. Let her not be afraid, for you have not given her the spirit of fear but a power of love and of a sound mind. God, we're going to help her be the first female black county commissioner in Rowan County. We speak it today. It's our mission to carry it out. So help us, Lord, to do your will. It's my prayer, God. Thank you for our guests on today. God, hopefully something was said or done that will help them along the way. God, help us this week to see somebody that we have not loved and show them some acts of love. God, help us to be the church, the people of God that you're calling us to be so that a dying world will know that Jesus is real and Jesus is real to me. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Have a great day. Bam, sing something for me.
Jesus' love. 